Hey, hope you all are doing really well. Welcome once again to my channel, Sabon on the side. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can create a mock integration for your API Gateway REST API. I'm going to demonstrate that one here. I will be following definitely these uh, steps over here. They are quite simple and quite easy to follow. What is the use of a mock integration? So mock basically doesn't mean uh, specific integration. Rather, uh, it, it's a kind of a dummy to the backend service that you are using while developing your application. So say for example, an application A, while it's uh, while it's in the development phase, depends upon an API or a third party link or some tool, which is, uh, which is, which hasn't been yet developed, but with the help of the solution architect or with the help of the system designer, it is already known that what kind of response that downstream service is going to provide. So you can mock that uh, services response by creating REST API mock integration and you can proceed with your developments activity. If I come back to the API Gateway console, I will proceed with creation of a REST API. You need to clear, click on this new API selection and go for a name. Per type of API, I'm going to select the endpoint type. Depending upon the type of use case that you have, you can select any one of them. So we'll proceed with creation of API. Your resource uh, is created over here, which is the root resource. And under that, I'm going to create a method. So the method I'm going to expose is a get. In my earlier uh, demonstrations, I have already shown you how Lambda function and HTTP integrations are performed for API Gateway REST API. But in this case, we will go with the demonstration of mock. So you select uh, this radio button over here scroll down and create method. Once the method is created over here, you go to the integration request. Again, in the integration request, you see there are no endpoints rather a mock. So if you scroll down in the mapping template part, you will see this is the status code that I am expecting that my backend should return. So that needs to be configured at the integration uh, request. And if I go back to the documentation over here, and follow the steps that uh, they are they have tried to implement here uh, first is let us go to the method settings method request so the main crux of this example is depending upon a query string parameter named scope you're going to define your response so this is something what the client can send and depending upon whatever the value of this scope uh, or query string parameter that the client will be sending you will be getting a response and a status code okay Cool. So let us come quickly over here in the method request part and method request section. We are going to basically specify a query string parameter. So let's click on edit. And in the query string parameter, add a scope. Okay. So depending upon whether I want to cache it or uh, use it as a cache key or whether it's a mandatory uh, field, you can select those options as per your need and requirement. So I'll save it. Now, once it is saved, I will go to, so the value of this query string parameter determines if the caller is an internal or external otherwise. Okay. So the crux of this example is if it is an internal, then only return a 200 status code with this response. And if it's a 500 status code, that is any external traffic, then uh, just a error message that this is not supported or something kind of that. So if I go again here in the integration request, my mapping template application JSON is this status code is 200. Okay. And as per this, you see in the integration request setting, you need to edit and use this mapping template. So I'm quickly going to copy this mapping template. And if I click in the integration request edit, I'm keeping these options, whatever it is that when no template matches, then pass through behavior. So, but it's not going to be that much valid here in this case. Okay. So I'll come quickly over here and just paste this setup. Let's save it. Now, once I save this, you see here the mapping template. It's basically checking if the input uh, variable has a parameter named scope, which is the query string parameter. I mean, if it is internal, then set the status code as 200 else 500. Okay, cool. Now you go to the integration response tab. 
over here you can either click on this box or you can just go to navigate to here in the integration response so there would be different status code and on the basis of that you can select uh, the corresponding mapping template so this is the default response where the status code matches 200 by default whatever the backend sends integration sends it uh, maps it to 200 and that is uh, passed through to the client but in our case it's going to be something uh, different for sure so in the integration the default response is going to be i'm considering it to be the success so that i'm going to change the template body it's only here so let's click on edit and in the mapping template just paste this so this is the status code 200 and this is if things are all good then this is something that you can send but how about another uh, integration response if i'm trying to plan out for okay so if it is a 500 uh, is that is expected in my case so we have to uh, create an integration response for status code 500 so first of all let's go to the method uh, response here and we'll create a method response as 500 okay and we save it now once we save it we go to the integration response again and we create a response now you see from uh, here you get to select the 500 uh, method response status code this is something what my client is going to get and here i'm going to pass this regex so this regex demonstrate that any 500 series error then uh, return the utilize these mapping template okay let's create and once you create you see in the integration re responses part you get a default response and a one which is the 500 series response however there's no mapping templates so let's go and edit it once i edit go to the mapping template add a mapping template type in application slash json okay and here you simply copy this and paste it okay save it okay once uh, you have saved it you don't need to deploy the api right away you can perform the testing from here itself okay so for example if i keep the scope as internal so this is some query string parameters that the client is going to pass let's see what is the result i'm getting so this is the status code that is the expected behavior 200 uh, go ahead without me the successful message but in case if the scope is say an external or some random value then i'm bound to get a 500 response and you see the request it goes through like this that uh question mark followed by a key value pair that's what query string parameters are some additional informations that you add uh, on top of the url itself appending at the end of the url okay so this is the response body that you get with the status code 500 and this is the method this is the response now once you deploy this if you want to add any authorizers or you want to implement any caching or in resource policy etc depending upon your use case how your setup is going to be uh, you can achieve this easily after uh, deployment and you can perform your testing meanwhile your downstream service gets uh, gets developed so this is how you perform uh, testing with the mock integration and that's all. So you can follow this documentation of uh, AWS public documentation in order to achieve it. And the steps are quite simple as we have seen. Cool. So if in case you have any questions, please feel free to revert on uh, the comment section. And do not forget to like, share and subscribe my video. Stay tuned. Thanks and wish you Merry Christmas and a very happy new year in advance.